President Brian McGee of Quincy University, we are back for another exciting edition of The McGee Files. Today, we're going to demystify the mysterious, and that includes academic advising. What is an academic advisor? What does that person do? And should you be terrified of your advisor? More in a minute from the Assistant Vice President of Academic Affairs, who's also Director of Advising. Let's go meet this fellow named Dr. Lee Enger. We're here with Dr. Lee Enger, who is a professor of biology, but more importantly today, we know that he is the Assistant Vice President for Academic Affairs and the Director of Advising. Dr. Enger, welcome to the McGee Files. Thank you. So excited to be here. Because you're a biologist, there's no surprise that we have all these images on your walls that depict, I don't know, bugs and dangerous critters and the inside of the human body. All correct? That is correct. All right. And so that image of the heart above your head, that's not supposed to signal to students that you're going to rip their heart out and show it to them? I don't know about that. Oh, you've never <laughs> done that though, right? Of course not. Of course not, because you're nothing if not helpful. That's absolutely All true. All right. So tell me, Dr. Enger, what does an advisor do? What's a, how does that person exist in the world and what is his or her job? So academic advisors, they help students plan their lives. Uh, plan your academic life, which includes your coursework from the first day that you get here to the last day that you leave. Um, there's a, a lot about success and your success by designing that with your faculty advisor that help you uh, arrive each semester towards your goal of meeting a bachelor's degree. Oh, wow. Actually, we work really hard on helping you design your degree to be done in four years. Wow, that, okay. And that, that's the, that's that the tip. important. Yes, it's very important. Um, occasionally, people need to stay for a fifth or fifth year, um, but we generally make sure that you're out of here in four. That's the plan. Okay. We want you to get on with your life when you're done here, and that's another thing mm -hmm. that academic advisors do is they help you plan for that next part of your life. So either your career, or if you're going to go on to medical school, or if you're going to go on to dental school, or if you're going to go and get a master's, um, all of those things are really important. And your academic advisor is helpful in that aspect. Okay, so how does someone become an advisor? So academic advisors are, it's actually part of a professor's job here at Quincy University. Unlike other institutions where you might have professional advisors, their academic advisors here are people who are professionals in their field, they understand your discipline, and they're actually very helpful in uh, helping you understand what's going to happen in the next part of your life. Okay. So if I were a student, I might come in here and sit down and talk to you just like I am now? Yes. Sit that, in this actually, very seat? actually, the very first few meetings are the most difficult meetings, but after that, it's we're... I'm a mentor, mm -hmm. uh, academic advisor is to help you achieve your goals. Do people cry sometimes when you're advising them? Um, actually, that doesn't happen very often. <laughs> okay, that's But ge generally, ac academic advising, um, your academic advisor forms a very close relationship with you, and sometimes there are parts of a college career that are mm -hmm. a little difficult, or decisions that need to be made that are difficult. Okay. So, so there might be some hard decisions about what do you want to do with the rest of your life? Yes, okay. and that happens, and oh. sometimes that changes, and that's mm -hmm. where academic advisors can help you find what your mm -hmm. real passion is. But let's say it is that first time I come in here. What should I do? Yeah, Who needs to come with me? Um, generally, you need to come by yourself. Okay. Um, the first, the well, that first, sounds terrifying. <laughs> the first few meetings are generally about uh, getting to know your academic advisor, your academic advisor making sure that you're um, prepared for your, the career that you're cho choosing or your major that you're choosing. And that idea is uh, to develop a relationship uh, that helps guide you in your plan for success here at Quincy University. Okay. And so there'll be some big picture questions about what you, what you want to do with your life. Then we'll talk about mm -hmm. specific courses you'll take and when you take them and how many courses you take in a semester. Generally, if you choose a major, the reason why you're interested in it is because you have something that is a part of you that you really enjoy about that. And actually, your academic advisor is someone else who also really enjoys what okay. you're interested in. And so there's already a, a common bond between you and the person mm -hmm. who's uh, advising you. And so faculty all over this campus are advisors, right? That is absolutely okay. true. But what should a student kind of bring to be prepared and ready to go for an advising session? Their ability to interact with their academic advisor. Okay. It depends on your academic advisor. They're all different. So a capacity to speak English is really helpful. That, that is very helpful. Okay. Maybe uh, a notepad and a pen so you can write something down yes. and look serious as a student. 
um, there, you'll run into different types of academic advisors. I mm -hmm. personally like to write everything down for you, and we mm -hmm. plan together that way. But there are some advisors who say, here, you need to come up with mm -hmm. a plan before you come to me. And so it's just about the, okay. the, how, how the, the academic advisor th thinks about what's mm -hmm. most important for you. I, in uh, biology, or if you're a pre-med major or pre-dental major, your major is very prescribed, which means that you have to have everything is planned from day one. Okay. If you're some other majors, there's a little bit more flexibility, and that allows the, the, the academic advisor to um, allow you to have that flexibility, and you come with your plan. So, and it just it becomes a give and take between the academic advisor and the advisee. Now, if I've forgotten a class that I've taken, uh, whether in high school or college, are you able to look it up? Um, yes, I actually can look up your high school transcript, or I can get that if I need it, or courses that you've transferred, I can help you find to make sure that you get those here. We work with the registrar's mm -hmm. office to transfer courses that might be dual credit, or co courses that you took at a, another institution. So it's relatively easy. So, okay. Well, this all sounds like a lot of work to do, um, and it sounds like it's a good thing that we have academic advisors to help students every step of the way. That is absolutely true. Well, that sounds, there sounds like success by design to me. It is success by design. And right. there is one other level, too, layer to this, too. Go on. I mean, we, we have a, um, success coaches here on campus, and part of their job is to help you achieve some other things in your, li in your life besides the academic part or in addition to the academic part. And they play a big role in academic advising as well. Success coaches and academic advisors. It sounds like we actually plan for students to, to succeed here at Quincy University. You're absolutely correct. So Dr. Enger, thank you so much for telling us all about advising. No student who comes to QU will ever make an advising mistake ever again thanks to your wisdom. Well, I thank you very much. But You're welcome. I'm not quite sure about that. <laughs> I'm confident that I'm confident there'll be no mistakes. And this has been case number two of the McGee Files. Thank you.